All right, guys, now we're ready to do a group analysis since we've already converted all our correlation maps to z-scores. Now, the first thing we need to know is actually which subjects are people with autism and which subjects were the control subjects. Uh, we can see this just going back to this FCON abide data set. And remember, we were working with the Kennedy Krieger Institute data. Now, under downloads, you also see this phenotypic file, which we didn't download last time. But if you download that now, you'll see a spreadsheet like this. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. I'll try to. Never mind. Okay, try to make it bigger, failed. I'll just zoom in. So right here you see this DX group column and also the subject ID. So based on the information they've given us here, there should be about 33 control subjects and 22 subjects with autism. So based on that, they're about... I think 33 people who have the two assigned to them and maybe 22 who have the one assigned to them. So based on that, I'm assuming that the people with one are the subjects with autism and the people with the two are the subjects who are controls. Okay, so just make a note of who is a control and who is an autistic subject. And based on that, what I've already done is I've just created two larger folders, autism and controls, and moved each of those subjects into the corresponding category. So if somebody had a control label or a two next to their name, I put them in the control folder. And if they had a one, I put them in the autism folder. The reason I do this is to make the t-test between them a little bit simpler. So I'm going to use uber underscore t-test.py. Again, you can do this manually just using 3D t-test, but it's much easier to do this through uh, uber underscore t-test. I'm going to call this script controls minus autism because what I'm going to do here is take a contrast of the resting state z maps from the controls and subtract from that the resting state z maps of the autistic subjects. So that's what I'm going to use and it's not going to be a paired test this is a between subjects t-test and data set A is going to be the controls. So now I go to choose file I go to controls I'm just going to select a representative z map so within any person's in this control subjects directory to scroll down to the results and this last data set that we created from the previous video. It should say core underscore the subject name and then a Z appended to it. I'm going to open that up and here I'm going to replace the subject number with an asterisk. That's a wild card so that it's going to expand and apply this to every single person in the control folder. So 32 people got selected. I think there was one that failed to run through 3 dd Convolve due to uh, some sort of technical issue. Anyway, select OK. Uh, set name. These are controls. Data index. We're going to make it zero because there's only one sub break that was output into that data set. And remember, it starts at zero. Data set B is going to be the subjects with autism. So I'm going to go up here, KKI. Autism, and again, just select representative subject, go into their results folder, and then select that correlation Z map. So it says that correlation has been converted to Z. Again, same thing, just replace the subject name with an asterisk. Because everybody's been processed the same way, their directory tree should be the same. I'm going to apply that pattern and notice that as opposed to controls, there are much fewer subjects in this directory that actually have been processed. The reason for that is because for a lot of the subjects with autism, 3D Convolve failed to run. And that's because a lot of the time points were censored out because of too much motion, suggesting that on average, the subjects with autism moved much more than did the control subjects. At this point, I just want to say there are a whole host of other issues when interpreting uh, any sort of contrast in resting state networks between these two populations. One of the main problems being that in any sort of comparison between controls and a patient population, uh, say people with PTSD or with autism or schizophrenia, odds are the patient population is going to move much more and you're probably going to lose a lot more subjects. So something to keep in mind, I'm not going to get into that or the caveats exhaustively, I just want to carry out a very simple uh, comparison between resting state networks. But do be aware of that if you're applying this to your own data. Okay, so again, fill out the rest of these set names, autism, data index is zero. And lastly, for the three t-test options, I'm just going to put unpooled because I don't think that pooled variance would be 
an appropriate assumption in this instance. Okay, so once we have all that, just click on this button right here. Generates a script, look it over, looks fine to me, and then hit the green button to start this. Should only take a few seconds. Once that's done, you can close out of Uber underscore t-test, and we have this new group results directory. So we have test 001, and within that we have test results. So here's the actual statistical data set. What I'm going to also do is I'm going to import something from the ABIN directory. I want a template that I can put everything on. What we could do is just average every subject's anatomical, or we could just copy one of these average templates. So I'm going to select one of these right here. Let's say MNI average 152T1. So I'm going to do that, copy that, copy both the brick and the header, and copy it to the present directory. Sorry about that. Copy uh, tilde for my home directory, a bin, and then that data set. Okay, open up Apni, and here I have my template MNI image, and I overlay the statistics data set on it. So remember, these are z-scores for controls minus autism. Using that seed region in the BMPFC we use to generate this correlation of a resting state network. I'm going to make this p-threshold a little bit more stringent. Well, not too stringent. I'll make it about 0.05. And then clusterize it a little bit to make it appear a little bit prettier. So now we have that, and as you scroll around here, notice here in this overlay, and also this threshold, you see the z-score at those coordinates. So we can look at the coordinates and also the peak z-score at those coordinates. You might want to do some further analyses. You can do a lot of other stuff. So here I've just tried to show you a very simple instance from start to finish of creating correlation maps of a resting state network and taking a comparison or contrast of those resting state networks. It could be within a group, say if you introduce some sort of manipulation, and then you do a similar resting state scan on the same subject, but at a different time point. Or it could be like in the current example, where we have two separate groups and we do a between subjects t-test. So those are the roughly the mechanisms you need to do. Obviously, there are a bunch of other caveats, other things you should be aware of, but that's the basic process. And I hope this helps. So thank you very much for sticking through to the very end. And if you'd like to join me in the parlor, we will be serving Nutella cake.